Hello and welcome to the second part of this tutorial. In the previous tutorial, we created this cool neon background. And in this part of the video, we're actually going to animate it in Adobe After Effects. And uh, now before I take this Photoshop file and throw it under After Effects, I actually, I kind of want to clean it and do some things to make sure it actually works the way I want to in After Effects. And we do this a lot. We just optimize the file and it saves a lot of hassle later on uh, because once you import a file into Photoshop, you cannot add uh, layers to it by changing that in Photoshop. So we wanna be prepared before we do so. First thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to save this as a new file. So this is the file that we made especially for this tutorial, uh, but now that we're gonna animate it, we're gonna make some changes and we're actually going to be a little bit destructive and that's why we wanna save this as a new file. We always do this, so we always have like a backup. In this case, I'm gonna do save as, and we're gonna change this file to neon background tutorial space dash space and I'm gonna call, call it flatten. And this is just what we do. You can call it zero two. This is just how we do it. It's not the official standard. There's no standard way of doing this, but this is how we do it. And you can come up with your own file naming, but for now we call it flatten. So now that I got it saved, first of all, I'm gonna delete some layers that I don't need anymore. This one is actually empty. I got this layer three. That's the old logo that I used to create the path with. And I'm gonna delete that too. And I'm gonna delete that background because it's actually not showing up because it's all the way in the background. And for now, I'm actually going to delete the reflection of the puddle. I might actually not do that here. I wanna do that in After Effects. So I'm gonna delete the reflection right here. So I'm gonna keep the puddle Then I got the logo. Then I get the ambient occlusion, the road and a brick wall. Now there's two things about that road and the brick wall. First of all, the brick wall is actually a little bit too big. I can deal with that, but the road, however, the road is way too big. And that's actually gonna cost a lot of memory in After Effects and it's gonna render a little bit slower. Your Photoshop file actually get unnecessarily big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to cut this out. So if I select everything on this scene, and this is a smart object, so I can't really cut out of it. First, I would need to rasterize it. And I can by going right click and then rasterize layer. But in this case, I just wanna copy out of it. So if I right click it with the mark you tool selected, I can say layer via copy. And then just delete the original road. And I got the road right there. I'm gonna say, call it road. And now you actually got that little piece. So I do the same for the brick wall, select everything, right click it and say layer via copy you can also just press ctrl j and i will do the same delete that and i will call this brick wall again so now i actually got a really clean file where everything is on already trimmed down and that's perfect for what i want to do with it so i'm happy all the layers are named i still got all the layer styles right there i can just uh, click those on and off i want to keep those in because i'm actually going to animate those in after effects so no reflection everything is named I'm happy, let's go to After Effects. Save this real quick and then open up After Effects. So now I can right click and then import it, file import, control I, or I can even double click this field right there. And I'm going to select the neon tutorial flatten that I just created and I'm gonna press enter. Now this screen is really important. It will say composition retain layer size. If it's not on that, you wanna put it on there. Don't say composition or footage, but always composition retain layer sizes. And another important thing is editable layer styles. And I wanna have that because I wanna animate those things that I just showed you. So keep that on, press okay. And I got a folder full stuff, all my layers, and I got a composition that After Effects created for me. Double click that, and I'm in that composition. I made this file, let's uh, let's actually uh, double check that. It's six seconds now. I think six seconds is perfect. It's 60 frames a second. That's fine for us. So uh, let's cancel out of that. And let's actually start by animating the glow on that logo. So I can open that up. I can select the layer styles. You see everything is still there. And I got the outer glow. And what I wanna do is I wanna wiggle this glow a little bit, just a little bit. It's kind of like buzzing, so it's quite fast. So I wanna do that. Now I can keyframe that, but keyframing is, uh, it gets a little slow, especially for something random like this. So instead of that, I'm gonna give it a little script. If you're not familiar with expressions, with scripts, go check out our expression tutorial that we have on this channel as well. And that should teach you everything you need to know. But for now, I'm just gonna Alt or Option, click this little stopwatch, and I'm gonna start typing wiggle. I don't have to type the whole thing. 
W-I-G is fine. And I press enter and I will make it wiggle quite fast, about 30 times a second. And I press a comma and let's give a really high number. Let's say uh, 60. Click out of that or press enter on your numpad. And then let's see how that looks. Oh, that's really strong. I think that's way too strong. Let's keep it a lot more subtle. So I'm gonna go, instead of 60, I'm gonna go 15. And that represents that number right there. I'm actually going to lower this number by default. So it can go to all the way to 70, and all the way to 100. So I won't get stuck at 100. Let's see how that looks. That's still really strong. Maybe even lower it a little bit more. Let's say eight. And that's quite subtle. I like that. That looks good. Zoom out a little bit. We're gonna close these again. So like I said before, I want that logo to appear in the puddle, but I also wanted to have the exact same jitter effect, the exact same glow effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put this in a new composition. So I'm gonna right click this and I'm gonna say pre-compose. And pre-compose means I basically, I put it in another little box. I'm gonna put it in another composition. So I'm gonna click that, Control Shift C, if you want or command shift C. I'm gonna give it a name and we'll call it logo. And really important, I'm going to click move all attributes into the new composition. So including the glow, everything, everything needs to be in there. This is a turn on, that's great. And it's gonna press okay. Now, as you can see, it actually turned my glow to something different. And that's because I put everything in a new composition and it will forget all the blend modes it has the blend modes that I had right there. You can see them right here. If I double click these in Photoshop, you'll see the inner glow is a screen and then the outer glow is a screen, but it will actually put everything back to normal. And that's not what we want. Luckily, if I uh, press toggle switches and mode here, if you can't see it, I'm gonna press that right now. And there we go. You got this little continuous restoration button right there. So if I click that, it will start giving me that glow again. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to duplicate this logo Duplicate the logo and I'm going to duplicate this puddle because I need that twice. Put it right under there and I'm just going to click toggle switches and modes again. If you don't have it, if you don't see it, I'm going to click that and I'm going to grab this logo and say, hey, use the alpha of that puddle. So there we go. And well, it looks like nothing is happening, but if I bring the logo down now, you can actually see it in a reflection. Obviously, we need to turn it around for it to make sense. There we go. So. Be sure to be in alpha mat, have the puddle and the logo duplicated and make one the track mat of the other. And if you don't use a lot of After Effects, if you're quite new to the, to the game, uh, this might be a little bit confusing at first, but just replay this part of the video a couple of times and you see what I'm doing. All right, so now you can see the logo flicker like this. That's great, but you can see the reflection doing the same thing. So now all I wanna do is actually make this whole scene move a little bit. First other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on everything, but if I scale one thing, it will actually start scaling everything and that's wrong, uh, that's, we don't want that. So in this case, I'm going to select everything except for the brick wall. I'm gonna parent everything to the brick wall. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, let's say 110%. So why am I doing that if I don't? I can't really move the camera anymore because everything is cut off. And that's something that, that we did in Photoshop and I'm going to put it at 110%. And I'm actually going to move this a little bit. There we go. And what I wanna do is I wanna move the camera from there to around there. So let's start all the way to right. Everything is parented to that one layer. So I only have to animate one layer. I'm gonna press P for position, set a keyframe, move it all the way to the end move that all the way to the end. So what you can see now is that it's actually moving left and right, but you know, that's not really three dimensional now, is it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate the ground. So it's actually skewing a little bit, not actually 3D, but it's gonna look 3D in a second. So I'm gonna take this road and I wanna give this road a little bit of a skew, right? But there's no option here to actually make it skew under transform, there's no skew option. Luckily, there's an effect called transform. And if you uh, got the effects and presets panel right here, if you don't have it, go to window and then effects and presets, control five and start typing transform. There we go, distort, transform. Luckily, there's an effect that does do it. 
gonna throw that on there and i need to give an anchor point i'll just skew this and that's not it's skewing over this point and i don't want that i actually want to select this this little symbol right there i'm gonna add it to the top all the way to the top and it will immediately jump away and that's because you want these numbers to be exactly the same so i'm just gonna click this Control c i'm gonna click that Control v I'm gonna click this, Control C, I'm gonna click that, Control V. So now those numbers are the same as the anchor point, right? The anchor point is right there, the position is right there. Now if I try to skew it, well, that's still not right. That's still not right, because the skew axis is going up. It needs to go exactly to the side, 90 degrees. All right, so now I can actually skew left and right. And if I start doing this, you can actually see like, hey, this is starting to look a little bit three-dimensional. So let's start by moving it all the way to the left as much as I can before I actually start seeing that little uh, black triangle there. So let's put it all the way there. There we go. It's about 35 and then go all the way to the end and then make it go probably minus 35, I think so. Yep, there we go, minus 35. And if I play that now, it'll give me a sense of depth. Obviously, the puddles are not moving yet, but I'm gonna fix that in a second. It's actually quite simple. So I can copy this effect, keyframes and all, to those puddles. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna open this up, and I can see effects, and I can click transform, I'm gonna copy this. Control C, I'm all the way at the beginning. I'm gonna click one of the puddles, and I'm gonna say Control V. Now, one of those puddles will jump away right away. That's not that's not what it's supposed to do. So let's start moving that anchor point back to the top and the center of this scene again. There we go. And let's copy those numbers to the position. Otherwise, it's going to jump away again. Let's copy that. Let's copy that. That's perfect. I'm going to open this again. I'm going to take those effects, the transform, and I copy this to the other puddle. Control V go and now those puddles will also move with the scene I can maybe move that puddle both puddles I need to move both puddles a little bit to the right and that scene will look pretty three-dimensional uh, last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the scale button on that wall and zoom in a little bit on it Let's go right there and zoom in just to say uh, 10%. So let's say 120, something like that. Besides going left to right, we're also zooming in a little bit. And that looks pretty three dimensional. Now, obviously this is all fake. The whole 3D thing is a little fake, but you know, it's, it's working out and uh, it's tricking my mind to believe that this is a three dimensional scene. I hope you can see it too. And these are all tricks that we use to make scenes more three dimensional in our videos. So be sure to check out those videos and see if you can spot the same tricks that I'm showing you right here. So let's play that one more time and then call it a day. If you have any questions, if you're stuck on anything, uh, first of all, be sure to subscribe. And second of all, join the Discord down below. We always love helping out if you're stuck on anything uh, or leave a comment and uh, tell me what you think about this video. And I'll see you on the next tutorial. Bye -bye.